Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sensei Rizzo video here today, bringing us a cool text effect. Also showing guys to also combine and make a cool banner to style. There we go. Uh, like the Sith Wave like 80s theme. You guys know what the last thing I did for an 80s theme video? Look, look, just look. Yeah? Yeah, we're not talking about that anymore. So we're gonna move on, move forward. I actually got a little bit of inspiration from his name is McKaylee? McK... Hold on, how do you say this again? Me, Jaylee. Me, Kaylee. Yo, McKaylee. So, I think I said it right. Regardless, the style is super freaking dope and inspiring me. I was like, yo, I want to give it a shot. Give me some Dr. Disrespect vibes as well. So, hopefully, guys, if you guys want to make some fan art for him, you can now know how to do the style a little bit. But, uh, yeah. So, with that being said, if you guys like the video, please sure to leave a like. And, of course, if you guys like this kind of content, please sure to subscribe if you guys haven't already. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. Enjoy. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and start off with the text effect and quickly run down what is actually being used. First, you guys want to start off with your Bevel and Emboss. Style is on inner, technique is on chisel hard, depth at 1000, size at 5, soften at 0, angle at 90 degrees, altitude at 30 degrees, highlight mode on whatever color of choice that you like to go with, but make sure the opacity is set to 60% and linear dodge add. And lastly, for shadow mode, you want to make sure it's on multiply, and you also make sure your colors being used is pretty much a near black color. Next up is adding the stroke. Size is at 2, position is on inner, normal blend mode, opacity at 80%, and color of your choice. Then add an inner shadow, blend mode on normal, color is white, 55% opacity, angle at 90 degrees, then distance at 8, choke at 0, and size at 1. Following that is inner glow, blend mode is on linear dodge add, opacity at 20%, color of your choice once again, choke at 0, and size at 8. Then you guys want to make sure you add a satin, which is blend mode on multiply, color on a gray tone, opacity at 30%, Distance at 7 and size at 40. Then lastly, for this text effect, you want to use a gradient overlay which actually controls your color. So whatever you guys see fits, make sure you have your gradient mode on normal and opacity at 100%. However, you want to add 5 gradient nodes. For me, I have 1 in the middle and 2 on either side, and of course 2 on the opposite sides being the shadow and highlight. All the 3 other ones in the middle are basically going to be used to add some streak lines, and you want to choose whatever color of your choice that you guys would like to use. Now, if you choose to add another font or text like I ended up doing, you want to follow the layer style, which includes Bevel and Emboss. Depth is at 1000, size is at 2, soften at 0, 90 degree angle, 30 degree altitude, highlight on the color of your choice. Then, inner glow, blend mode on linear dodge add, opacity at 10%, and of course, once again, the color of your choice. Choke is at 0, size is at 8. And then last one is a gradient overlay once again, and pretty much the same premise of the original text effect. You want to choose complementary colors to go with your previous one. So for me, I'm with like purples and blues, and for the actual secondary one, I'm going to go a whole bunch of tones of yellow. And once you guys completed your layer style, be sure to save it by hitting the new styles button on the right side of your actual layer style panel to save it. And then to open it, all you have to do is go to the word style on the top left, and the last one that's always at the end is pretty much your newest one at all times. Alright guys, so now that you guys have the text effect, I want to go ahead and jump in, give it some control, and just kind of create the banner itself, and hopefully just make it super easy for you by just doing it myself and just saying, you know, I get it, I'm going to go explore, have a little fun, that's what basically I'm going to be working on. So, I'm going to start off with using a little bit of stuff that I already have in my pack. Now, one thing is this cool little grid, it's kind of like this, it's kind of a staple in this kind of theme here, so I'm actually going to take my grid color here and change this to a bit of a blue tone, and I'll lower the opacity on it, not lower the opacity on it, but lower the, the vibrance of it, just a little bit lower than usual, right? I'm going to drag it below my text as well, and uh, for the record, the background color that I'm using is 02131D, right? I'm going to press OK. Now, with my grid, I'm actually going to rasterize it, that way I can do this, which is next, right? I can right-click it and use Perspective. With the Perspective tool, I'm going to take, take the actual anchor point on the right-hand side and move it towards the right to give it a really cool kind of like distance perspective. But to even make it look even more further distance, I'm going to take the back, move this anchor point in the right-hand side, and now we're talking. That looks pretty freaking cool. Now it feels and looks like this text is actually sitting in kind of like a 3D plane, and uh, I'm a fan. So I'm also going to take a layer style, take my black brush here, okay? I'm going to erase right around here, and I think that's that's pretty good. It kind of like fades it out a little bit. So I'm also going to make another new layer, and with this new layer, I'm going to use a shadow brush, okay? Now what this shadow brush is for is just to create shadows pretty much, and I'm going to make a black shadow right underneath this text here, 
right? And I'm gonna say lower the opacity just a little bit because realistically, you're not gonna see this too much, but it will actually help. Okay, so now what this is done, I'm also gonna add in this PNG leaf. Also, this pack I'm using that you guys see right here will be in the description down below. It will be in the description down below for you guys to purchase for $8. It's the parallel pack, my newest graphics pack. All the stuff in here is like made by me. Besides this, I just threw this in here, but I actually just found this on Google. I just typed in leaf PNG. Okay, I'm gonna take this, move that over here. I'm gonna hold Alt and drag. Right, I'm gonna flip horizontal. We're gonna make this a little bit smaller. Okay, and I got some leaves in here as well. Let's go ahead and also add some stars. We're gonna add some stars with using like a nice 100% harness brush. By the way, if I'm, you don't know how to do this yet, it's holding Alt on your keyboard while the brush tool is active and moving up and down for hardness and left and right for diameter. So you can see I have a hardness at 100%. Diameter is at around 50 or so. We're gonna go a little smaller, definitely a lot smaller. But with a nice simple size brush, we're gonna start off by clicking a few times like so. We're gonna go a little bigger and click a few less times, right? Then I'm gonna go super small. I'm gonna click a lot more times and like kind of get a little bit below the canvas a little bit. I would say it's pretty good. I'm gonna press Control U on my keyboard though with hue and saturation. Take my lightness and throw it up a little bit. That way it's more like a kind of like a cool silhouette color, not so much the same kind of blue that's here. More of like a ye yellow, but white that has a little bit of a blue hint to it. Okay, so now that I have this, I think we're pretty much good to kind of combine all these layers for a second. So everything besides the text we're gonna combine. So I'm gonna take this layer here, click on it, hold shift, it's like even the background layer as well. Control J to make a duplicate, Control E to merge it all together. And there's two ways we're gonna do this. You can use camera roll filter, Okay, and you go to this uh, effects table here, and they can use the grain value here, right? With this, you have a little more customization. You can mess with the size and the roughness, but I'm not gonna use this for this one, but I'm gonna use it on the, in later in the video, but I'm gonna use filter, uh, where is it called? Not pixelate, noise, and then add noise, and we're gonna add about 4.5 value, Gaussian on the distribution, and make sure monochromatic is on, that we don't have no red, greens, and blues, and greens in there, red, blues, and you get it, right? Make sure it's like monochromatic turned on, Press OK. So, now that you have a little bit of noise in here, starting to get that feel a little bit better, I would say right above this layer here, we're gonna add a bit of a glow on the bottom. And whenever you're adding glows, do not use too high saturation of a color. What I mean is, don't use this kind of blue, use this tone of blue. You can see how it's still very much so blue, but it's very much so darker. Those are the kind of tones you wanna make sure you use, right? Then I'm gonna take a pretty big size brush. Let's say click around here a few times, boom, we're gonna take this linear dodge add, then we're gonna load the opacity just a little bit more, right? You can see kind of just adding a little bit of value there, but I'm also gonna actually end up, hmm, do I wanna do that now? I mean, I guess I could, I'm gonna use a little bit of br uh, brightness and contrast, take the brightness, lower it down just a little bit, right? Not a little bit, basically negative 80, that's not a little bit at all, but I'm gonna take the actual layer mask here, and if you guys know how layer masks work, once again, um, black will erase, white, fills in. So black erase, you can see how on the layer mask, my brush is black and I'm clicking, it's erasing and white, you see how it's filling in. So I want to make the top half a little bit darker and the bottom half a little bit more uh, brighter. So I think it looks pretty good here. So what I want to also do is let's make a new layer and take a brush again. With this brush here, I have this pretty cool brush. I'll probably put it in the description down below for you guys to use. Um, if I don't, remind me, I will give it to you. Um, trust me. But this brush here has like cool, like sort of like gets a little bit thinner when you kind of curve it. So I'm gonna say, we're gonna zoom in just a little bit more, right? We're gonna try to take it and we're gonna try to make the perfect squid. That's a pretty good first try. I'm not, we're not upset with that. We're gonna keep going with that. God, thank God. Okay, so with this, usually you're, you're gonna have a simple one text layer for the record. Um, by the way, the reason why I do not have a text layer is because I wanna mess with my text a little bit more. I made one side, one, this is basically one here. Make sure you guys right quick. Right, this is one half of the text and these are separate. I just made this smaller, these bigger to make it look more cool and dynamic. So you guys can also do that. If you guys wanted to like take this and be like, yo, I wanna make control T, right? You can do warps, right? You can do like a cool lower arch warp and all these warps that you end up doing as well also add a really cool kind of theme and, and how you say style to your stuff. So if you wanna make a pretty, if you have a cool font that also works with warps, try it out. It might make your text effect look a little better. I just think having it too simple is a little bit too weird for this style. So keep that in mind, but that's what this text layer is. Okay, so the reason why I just duplicated it is because I don't really have a text layer since I did that. But you guys might just have a text layer and it's on a warp. So regardless, take your text layer, okay, right? And make a duplicate of it. If you did, you didn't, whatever, you guys get the idea, right? Um, I'm gonna make a new layer. Excuse me, not make a new layer. We're gonna take our squiggly line layer and use the layer mask on it. Then I'm gonna hold control and then select my uh, 
text layer. There we go. My main text layer, just like so. Holding control and selecting the main text layer will make a marquee selection of it, which is basically saying is it's selecting the actual text itself and uh, highlighting it so it's only erasing or uh, selecting the actual the text itself. So if I go back to my layer mask here and take a black, right? Let's say it goes over this, under the S and under the Y, right? Over the N, maybe it doesn't go over the N here. It goes over here and then under here. It'll go over the T, but under right here, maybe. Nope. Let's go over or under right here and on over the T and you can see what's happening here is it looks like it's weaving through because we're skipping letters and erasing in certain spots where it kind of like obviously highlights and overlaps the actual text. So I think it's a pretty cool little effect to do. And the cool thing is you can either do that or you can do some cool triangles, right? With the triangles, you can just add some really cool sort of like triangles. It looks kind of weird right now, but I want to show you this glow effect really quickly. We're going to take this, put a little layer mask on it or layer style on it. We're gonna use outer glow, right? We're gonna put it at 65, 62 size, and the color itself is kind of matching the same tone as before. Don't go pure white, I think, here. I would just say, like, add a little bit of a hint of color, so I do have a hint of blue in mine. Okay, press OK, press OK again. And now, <clears throat> if you wanted to go ahead and go around and be like, yeah, I just wanna add some random things. I mean, you honestly could. It, it'll look pretty cool. You can see just the idea behind it if you just do some really nice triangles. Um, it might end up looking freaking dope, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't really want to, but just keep in mind, there's some cool things you can do, right? So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some lighting effects and you just get to kind of finishing this thing off here. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's do this. New layer, let's take a brush, a nice soft brush, right? I'm gonna choose a nice darker tone color here. Always choose a darker tone color when using and making uh, kind of how you say glows don't use too bright uh, too much of a saturated color Use a definitely a darker color to start off with right so with this I'm gonna click once right here change my bundle from normal to linear dodge add right then I'm gonna click another time right here Right then another time over here That looks pretty freaking dope. We're gonna add another new layer We're gonna take this yellow here make it a little bit darker by just taking the hue bar bringing it down click once here Linear dodge add, click once pretty close here, and that looks pretty freaking dope. Okay, I'm a fan. One thing I'm definitely not a fan is, is the size of the actual text though. Don't mind me, we're just gonna make this a little bit bigger because God, was that annoying me. Okay, I would say it's way better size. That feels way better. Okay, perfect. So now this is pretty much going on here. All that's really left is just adding the little things that we want to basically end up adding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yo, right above here, my brightness and contrast that we did, we're going to make a new layer and we're going to add some electricity. I actually have some electricity brushes here. Uh, or just honestly, it doesn't really matter which ones we choose. It does, but like it doesn't at the same time. We're going to go with this one. We're going to choose a blue from the actual uh, text itself. Okay. Then we're going to make another new layer, choose a purple or pinkish tone here. And then we'll choose this one over here. And just add some pretty cool electricity. Then it looks pretty dope. Yep, I'm a fan. I'm down. I'm down. Okay, so last but not least, just added in this texture over here actually. Now, this texture is basically a plastic texture that I end up just taking a picture of a plastic and then lowering the blend if option. So, if you guys don't know what to do, just get a regular picture of, or even to find on Google, right? Take a regular picture, then double click on the actual layer. Hold Alt where it says blend if down here, split the anchor. Right by holding alt and clicking on the right side of the anchor, it'll split it. Move this value anchor, this little sort of kind of half of the anchor, through the spectrum of black to white. What it's saying is, however far more you go towards the white, it's saying whatever value of black that ends up being, right, it's going to be invisible. So it's a pretty cool little tactic to actually get a really cool see through looks. And I'm going to do the same thing with under night under. Uh, underlying layer this will help me bring the text forward you can see what's happening there right when i move this through you can see i was kind of like allowing it to kind of seep through the logo um or the actual text itself but i'm also going to take the fill itself as well and lower this down because it's not going to be too aggressive but i think something right around the 40 percent mark i think is the best ideal kind of position here so lastly we're going to take all this stuff and kind of combine it into one layer by just doing one simple little key uh how do you say shortcut Control, Alt, Shift, and E. It'll merge everything, all your layers into one single layer, just like so that I have right here. Now you don't have to do anything else, right? We're gonna right click, convert to a smart object. We're gonna go to filter, camera raw filter. And in camera raw filter, we're gonna change this little Y here, the before and after. And this is where you just have a lot of fun. So one thing for sure, clarity, watch this, or contrast. Look at that, just saying, right? I mean, okay, right, clarity, we're gonna add a lot of that. You can just see what's happening here. 
Just saying, okay, saturation, add a bit of that. Okay, okay, right, right. We're gonna add a little bit of uh, sharpening as well. And this is what I was talking about before. You can add, go to this uh, effects tab now, take the grain, add a little bit of grain. Don't go too crazy. I'll say 20, 25, 50 is pretty good for me. So have fun with what you wanna have fun with, but hey. Also this tab right here, hue, saturation, luminance, adjustments. If you wanna take your hues, you can actually change the color, what's going on here, and get a completely different color than you already had before. Um, you can have a lot of control in here as well. So have a lot of fun in this kind of like section as well, because once again, it's it's meant to just, just have fun, bro. Just enjoy yourself and, uh, you know, just mess around some colors. I'm gonna say that's pretty good for me. Let's just say, yeah, I, I would say that's pretty good for me. Let's just go ahead and say press OK now and kind of get out of that. Then you got something like this. <clears throat> Realistically, this is pretty much done. I'm gonna do a few more things, which you can try, which I would suggest is color balance, right? Mess around the color balance a little bit. That's a pretty cool tone right there. Then I'm also, besides color balance, use this. We're gonna use um, Vibrance. So with this Vibrance table, we're gonna take the saturation and lower this pretty far down. You can see how cool of a look this gets, but since Vibrance also automatically comes with a layer mask, which again, black erases, white fills in. If you take a brush on your layer mask, on your Vibrance, you can then erase in some few spots here and get a few spots of the banner to be like really vibrant and the other spots are kind of like lower tone colors. It just adds this really cool dynamic into it and overall, you're pretty much done at this point. At this point, you are done. You can add whatever you want to end up adding. You can do whatever you want to end up doing. And it's one of those things where the color correction just ends up completing everything in this entire thing. So this text effect didn't start off as much, but when you actually end up adding some really cool backgrounds and lighting effects to it, it looks super freaking dope. So. With that being said, that's today's video here done. And hopefully you guys learned something, had a little bit of fun. And uh, yeah, I'm just cheesing because I think it looks pretty freaking dope. I can just see a lot of you guys having that mindset of having some really cool ideas and enjoying it doing yourself. So hopefully you guys end up doing so. If you guys leave a like on the video, excuse me, if you like the video, leave a like on the video. If you guys did enjoy it, if you guys wanna watch more content of me and you're not subscribed yet, please go and do so. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you make some doctor suspect something like that, you know, you want to, you, know, you want to tag me in it, you'd be like, yo, thank you, Cecil. I got you. I got you. So with that being said, I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Cecil HQ is out. You gotta get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking from you guys later.